I'm John Beltran with Dave Urich at Bee Digger Stadium in this 2A quarterfinal. Platte Valley with a football on first down and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Joe Rosenbrock is back in the game, so he didn't miss a play. Zender resets in the backfield, and that time the handoff on the right side to Floaton. Rosenbrock holds him up and throws him down to the ground after a gain of one to the 26-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. What a play by Jr. You know, he stood right there. A kid was trying to block him, but you could see he kept his hands out there. He didn't let that blocker get into his body. Kept that separation he needed, and then right after Float made his move to the outside, Rosenbrock threw the, the blocker to the inside, and, and he bear-hugged him right to the ground. And it looks like there's an equipment timeout, and now they restart the clock. Apparently there was a helmet issue with Rosenbrock right after that play. Second and nine for Platte Valley at their own 26. Smith and a shotgun, two receivers to the left. Zender is now in motion that way, and Smith will roll to the left with Float there. Stops, throws off his back foot towards the far sideline. The pass is going to be broken up at the 46-yard line by Bruce Melendez, intended for Kyle Olson, the 6'2", 178-pound sophomore, and it's third down. There is a flag down. If that's against Brosh, that could be roughing the passer, and it will be roughing the passer against the bead diggers. Well, you can't commit penalties like that. That's pretty obvious. That goes without saying. That would have been third and nine. Instead, it's first and ten for Platte Valley. And the football will be placed at the 40-yard line. Well, the beat diggers got away with a penalty earlier because they were able to convert out of the first and 23. But you keep doing this too much, and it's going to come back to bite you. You know, they got to have their their head screwed on, the same guy. You know, had a face mask earlier today. Then he comes up with a roughing penalty this time in critical situations. And guys just have to have their heads screwed on straight. First and 10 for Platte Valley at their own 40-yard line. Two receivers out to the left and right. Smith once again in a shotgun. Man in motion to the right. Awaiting the snap. Smith is going to roll to his right. Wants to set up a screen out to the left. The pass is caught by Float. Tries to get around Hanson. He does. Back to the inside. And Float is going to spin. And he's going to be down at the line of scrimmage. Too many bead diggers out there, including Hanson and Hefner and Tyson Larrick. And they all combine to make the play. It'll be second down. And we'll call it 10 right there, just shy of the 40-yard line. You know, with the all of a sudden the screen coming out. Some of these other plays, Platte Valley starting to run. You get the sense that Platte Valley starting to dig into that playbook a little bit, trying to figure out what's going to put a touchdown up on the board in a hurry and maybe try to stimulate a little uh, momentum for the Broncos. Second down and 10 for Platte Valley at their own 40-yard line. They've got two receivers out to the left once again, one to the right, one setback. Caddy resets in the backfield. Smith is going to hand it off to Baladez on the left side, and he is thrown down at the line of scrimmage. Holy Mahungus. Levi Brenneman, who took a brief break, was able to make that play. He was fired up there. It's third and ten. Boy, he just wrapped him up in a hurry, and I'll tell you what, I'm glad he did because that Baladez, is, he's a big kid, but he's got a lot of speed, and I'm, you know, he's a little scary when he gets the football. Darren Will checks out. Dylan French checks in. Third and 10 for Platte Valley at their own 40-yard line. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. Brush leads 14 to nothing on Skyler Seawald's eight-yard run and a five-yard run by Eric Garcia in a shotgun along that left hash mark. Zender will reset in the backfield. Jordan Smith has the football play action. The pass out to the left is caught, and maybe for a yard, that's it. Caught in the left flat right in front of the Platte Valley bench as the bead diggers made the play. And the pass was caught over there by Trent Farenbrook, the 5'11", 150-pound sophomore. But the B-Digger defenders, including Bruce Melendez, along the far sideline, were there to make the play. And Shea Hansen back deep to receive. And there's the punt. Boy, very low, and but very deep. Hansen calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 17 as Killian Sollers was able to launch that one for 43 yards and with 510 to go in the second you want to stay aggressive but you lead 14 to nothing Platte Valley does get the second half kickoff you obviously cannot make mistakes here so deep in your own territory that's for sure you know I think Chad Amaro on that play he came right through the middle almost blocked that punt and I'm not sure that wasn't a disservice to the diggers because he might have given that punter a surge of an adrenaline and and enabled him to kick the ball so far first and 10 for Platte Valley 
Check that for the Beat Diggers at their own 17-yard line. Rush has two receivers out to the left. C.J. Kukas is the quarterback on this play. With Weiser in the backfield. Kook is going to hand it off to Weiser, up the middle of the 20, down to the 25-yard line, back to the left of the 35. Weiser in the open field at the 50, along the sideline, and he's tackled inside the 40 to around the 37-yard line. A big play for Connor Weiser, and a gain of 46 yards, and a beat digger first down. Holy Mahungas, they got out of that jam. 94 yards now for Weiser on five carries. I'll tell you what. Brush does it again. They get Platte Valley thinking we're going to throw the football by putting Kukas back there at quarterback. Platte Valley forgets all about the running game. Brush runs a trap right up the middle and just gets huge yards. First and 10 for the Bead Diggers at the 37 yard line of Platte Valley, leading 14 0. Kukas is the quarterback once again. Weiser's the lone setback. And Kukas to hand it off to Seawall. Check that, not Weiser. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. And the tackle was made by Balades, but Platte Valley did come with a blitz. Yeah, they did. And I'm not sure on that play if Brush had, you know, all the guys. They wanted. I saw some of the guys pointing where they wanted some people to line up, and people weren't lining up quite right. So as they changed quarterbacks and they changed things around a little bit there in the backfield, trying to disrupt this Bronco defense, I think they, you know, they might come up a little bit short on personnel. Yeah, it almost seemed like they had ten players out there, wasn't it? I mean, I don't know, but it, it looked like, like you said, that they might have been one short. Second down and 10 for the Bead Diggers of the Platte Valley, 37. Two receivers split each side. Seawald is the lone setback. Kukas to throw over the middle of the pass is incomplete. Behind Shea Hansen and coming with major pressure for Platte Valley was Billy Wilson. In fact, he got into the backfield untouched. Good thing that Kukas got rid of it, and Kukas took a shot. Yeah, he did, but, you know, the slant was wide open right there. It was a good idea. The receiver that the Diggers were missing last time, usually they have twins both on or on each side when they're in that fly formation, and they were missing the guy on this side. That time they come out, they put somebody there, Kukas, or I mean Hanson, they went ahead and had him run about a five-yard post, and he was open. The pass was going to be completed for a first down, but because of the pressure, Kukas had to throw it behind him. Third down and 10 for the Bead Diggers of the Platte Valley, 37 with 4.08 to go in the second quarter. And the Bead Diggers lead 14-0. Rosenbrock is in the backfield. Garcia is now the quarterback, and the Bead Diggers, sensing that the play clock is running out, call a timeout. We will keep it right here for all of your auto supply needs. Stop by Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urich and videographer Grayson Simmons, who's done some fine work during the home games throughout the course of the season, ksyr.com slash sports, ksyr.com slash sports. Click on brush videos, and we have tons of videos and many clips from games throughout the course of this season. Now, the Bee Diggers do win this game. They'll be on the road. This is their final home game, regardless of what happens today, because they'll be on the road next week with a victory, either at Faith Christian or in Aspen, and then in two weeks from today on December the 5th is the state championship game from Legacy Stadium. That's at Cherokee Trail High School. Let's see what the Beat Diggers can figure out. Brush on their opening drive was 3-for-3 three three on third downs, including third and goal from the 8. From the 37 of Platte Valley. Garcia under center. Seawald and Rosenbrock in the backfield. Kukas in motion to the left. The option right. There's the pitch to Rosenbrock. Swings it to the outside of the 36-yard line. Tries to get around a defender. Stays on his feet. And he's down at around the 34. It's a gain of three. Boy, penetration out there by Chase Maxey. It'll be fourth down and seven from the 34. Interesting decision here because... You can give Platte Valley some excellent field position if you go for it and do not convert, but you can also pin them very deep. The Bee Diggers will bring in three. They'll bring in four, and four come out. And one of the offensive linemen is, was, oh, I was going to say it was going to be a punt because I saw one of the offensive linemen coming out, but he's not coming out. It looks like they're going for it. Fourth and seven from the Platte Valley 34. Kukas under center. Back to throw, looking over the middle of the pass. is caught by Hanson. Inside the 20 to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Touchdown, Bee Diggers! Kukas to Hanson from 34 yards away. Holy Mahungas, the Bee Diggers lead 20 to nothing, and the Bronco fans are shocked in brush. 
I'll tell you what, another guy that's shocked is uh, Killian Sollers, the defensive back for Platte Valley. He flew up there to make a tackle on Hanson at about the five-yard line. Hanson stuck his right hand out there and, and stiff-armed him right onto his back onto the ground and jogged into the end zone. i got to tell you, Dave, I think many are stunned in this. T- that stiff-arm did break him loose at around the 10-yard line, like you said. Jesus Gardinas to attempt the extra point. Eric Garcia to hold. Perfect snap. The kick is up, and that kick is good. 3.13 to go. Second quarter. Brush 21. Platte Valley nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.